All right. Hi, guys. Um, I know I submitted the same video a little while back, uh, about a month ago, and uh, you guys said that you would prefer if I had a uh, commentary added to it. So talking about what I'm doing. So that's what I'm going to do. So um, thank you so much for you, your uh, feedback. I really appreciate it. And I like doing these, so uh, it's a pleasure for me. So as you can see, um, painting the clouds here, and I can't really take that much credit for <laughs> these cloud brushes. They're really amazing. Um, and I left the download link in the last video, and I'll leave it in the new video as well. But this is just kind of um, brushing around, trying to get the composition and the color all together. And um, there is still a composition going on here, even though it's just the clouds. Um, uh, trying to f figure out what the movement of everything is going to be. Um, as I said in the description of the last time I uploaded this video without commentary, um, I started with a photo that I found online just to get the um, the color palette and everything how I wanted it. Um, and I was very deliberate about what I chose. I knew exactly what I wanted beforehand and uh, really painted over most of it. The only real thing that's left from the photo is that little cloud uh, all the way at the top there so everything else is painted by me um, I knew that I wanted this to be pretty um, minimalistic from the beginning um, I was going for something really simple and really effective simple composition but um, emotional was the the goal here so right now I'm um, still painting in clouds and setting up the lighting scenario and uh, I I'm a little embarrassed to admit but I'll tell you guys um, I Actually, there's a significant amount of this video uh, or of this recording that I cut out. Um, the reason being that I, my original, it, it was all spent on the castle. And uh, I, I spent way too much time <laughs> try, nitpicking on that and uh, ended up with a design that just was not working at all. And um, so I scrapped it and completely started over. And you'll see that a little bit later. I'll point it out to you. But um, here uh, I'm. I use the uh, marquee select tool, whatever you want to call it, um, top left in the tools panel, to uh, get the rough shape blocked out. And I don't always do this. I it it depends on um, the scenario. But I did it here because you wanted to kind of really clearly see the outline of um, what was going on here in the front. And uh, usually I just go kind of with brushes, but I've been, I've been using the selection tool a lot more. And uh, I think that where you want to make a punchy point um, with some hard edges, uh, that's that's really the way to go. I mean, it's just much easier to control. And uh, I would definitely recommend you use that more if you don't. Right now, I'm just trying to figure out the placement of these guys because that is important if you're going with such a, uh, with a really minimalistic composition, especially where things are are placed. Um, and like I said in my last tutorial series, uh, the place of the highest contrast is going to be m more than likely is is where you want it to. Um, uh, you you want to put the most important thing and. Um, Ironically, I spent the most time definitely on the castle, more than anything else, as you'll see later. Um, but it's not the most important thing, which is why I kind of give it faded colors. It's far off in the distance. It's important because it builds the world, uh, and it and it puts us in a believable space, and kind of adds a little bit more story to. Uh, why um, these two are out on uh, an adventure together? What they're doing? Maybe they're uh, try where they're where they're trying to go. What's in the castle? I don't know, but uh, that's for you to determine. It is a little bit of a mystery element there as well, which is kind of entertaining. Uh, I also painted a, as you can see, I'm I'm painting right now the um, a tree. In the background, uh, I thought it would kind of compositionally lead you back into the frame, but I 
ultimately got rid of it because I just felt like it didn't need to be there. Uh, there's already a lot of movement um, in the clouds that kind of keep you within the in the frame, so to speak. And that sounds pretty vague um, to people who aren't uh, who haven't done much research on composition, which you need to if you haven't. <laughs> please, please, please do. Um, again, read uh, Creative Illustration by Andrew Loomis. Trying to add like some equipment maybe that uh, maybe they brought with them, maybe like a shield or an extra backpack or something like that. But ultimately in this kind of image, it needed to have a s really strong silhouette for you to be able to understand uh, what it is because there's no internal um, detail on it. So you had to be able to tell just by its silhouette what it was and there wasn't that much that I could come up with uh, for that scenario that would really help uh, that had a strong silhouette as well. So I just ended up doing the pretty easily identifiable runaway backpack uh, to potentially give a lead to that story. And he's got a sword as well, so you can see that they're doing some uh, epic adventuring. But yeah, there you go. You see, I just deleted the uh, old castle. That's where I cut actually I spent like two and a half hours doing that which is kind of ridiculous so I kind of knew that I was tunnel visioning and forgetting the point and honestly that's completely okay um, to just work on something for a long time and then blow it up uh, and get rid of it uh, it just pride be damned don't hold on to something if it's not working if it really is not working and um, also just as important is not using that as an excuse to just give up on something. You need to stick it out until it's right. And part of making sure that it's right is knowing whether you need to um, scrap something and give it another try completely or just keep working away at it until you can figure it out. Usually I only get rid of something um, if I've been looking at something for so long that I can't even look at it objectively anymore, um, and it's really, really difficult for me to do that. So that's generally the only time that I really uh, feel like I need to get rid of something, uh, if, I, if I'm at that point. But otherwise, um, sticking with it until it's right is really, really important, and it's a good exercise because it helps you to figure out uh, it, it makes you really sit down and think about what you've done wrong, what your illusions are, and what you didn't even see was there, maybe uh, didn't notice that you were doing it, but you knew something was off. Uh, training, training your eye in that way is really, really important. So don't... It, it's, it's very important to be able to let go of something if you put a lot of work into it and it's not working, but... It's also really, really important to um, be able to train yourself in that way. Um, it's okay to, to mess up. And, you know, like I said, I've admitted my mistakes a lot. <laughs> I, I have several of them um, throughout this video even that I've told you guys. I mean, you're through, even when you're successful as an artist, you're going to always... Um, feel like you're always problem solving you're always figuring out a new thing you're always adding to your arsenal you're always it's always an uphill battle and that's completely fine um no shame in that at all uh in fact i would say that if you're looking for uh an easy career art is not the way to go but you have to be it's it's the thing that keeps it interesting i mean if uh, you're content to be in a cubicle, that's fine because it's easy, but it's also very boring. Um, so, you know, just be okay with the fact that it's always going to have its challenges in art and learn to love the challenge because that's, like I said, ultimately what keeps it interesting and what separates it from um, unskilled labor. A lot of people think that it gets easy after a while and 
things do get easier, but uh, if you're any good at all, then you're going to look for ways to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and get better as an artist constantly. So I wouldn't, uh, I would not pick art as a career if you're um, looking for something that's just going to get, you know, easy after a while. Anyway, done with that rant. And I put birds in the uh, in the background because every concept artist loves to do that. It's it's a it's a great trick. I mean, don't just throw them in there uh, needlessly, but it is one of the ways that you can show um, really grand scale if you do it correctly. There's it there's a I kind of re kind of recently I guess. Um, scribbled a, a page of notes while I was doing studies and uh, one thing I kind of came to was a rule of threes type of thing uh, with scale and if you're trying to show what I, what I came to was if you're trying to show an extremely large scale uh, then you have to incorporate like three things and really it doesn't have to just be about scale it was in this situation for me but uh, anything you're trying to demonstrate in the in, in your piece in your painting um, there needs to be I would say no less than three clues as to what you're going for the birds is a clue uh, about the scale here about the, but the scale isn't really in this piece it isn't really the most important thing the most important thing is the relationship between the boy and his dog and uh, where they're going and that they're away from home and you can see all of those things just by uh, like the backpack was one thing I added the sword was one thing I added um, and of course that they're in close proximity to each other and the castle because it gave them a destination I could have just had them uh, looking out and that would have been fine as well but it's uh, just that little extra umph that uh, gives it a little bit of motivation and uh, you know maybe maybe there was a better way to, to show it maybe the, the all the um, work that I put into the castle might not have been worth that extra just little thing I don't know uh, it turned out better than I expected so you know maybe it was the right decision but uh, <laughs> I mean I, I don't always know what I'm what kind of decisions I'm going to make before I go in. I just kind of figure it out as I go. Um, and a lot of this is just problem solving. Just a cool little touch there to make it a little bit more fantasy, cinematic. Gives it a little bit of a camera effect, lighting effect kind of thing going on there. Um, which I don't really do that often, but I've kind of started doing more things like that. And I mean, like I keep saying, it's a learning experience for me too. I'm always, you know, figuring out new stuff. I also got uh, an interesting question on the last um, iteration of this video without the tutorial part or without, you know, the commentary. And, um, Someone asked, basically, how do you know wh where to, I mean, how do you know where to put the highlights and how do you know where to, uh, how, how, how you're going to detail the castle and things like that because it, you know, it just seems so intricate and I've seen a lot of paintings like this too where I'm like, oh, holy crap, you know, sometimes it's really easy to um, make it look like there's a lot of detail in something, but uh, with with minimal work, and you'll see a few things that I do in um, while while I'm uh, detailing the castle. But I I mean there's and it's a good question. I the person was kind of asking like, is there a tutorial I can look at that will show me um, how? to uh like where to put the where to put the highlights and stuff and it's like no there's no there's no video that's going to tell you exactly how to do that um it's took 
a long time for in a lot of studies uh, for me to kind of understand in general how architecture works or how anatomy works or how lighting works, uh, cinematic, uh, cinematography techniques and uh, how lighting works. I mean, it's really complicated stuff. And I'm really, I don't say that at all to be condescending. Um, it's, it's really difficult and not a lot of people, uh, I sure didn't, I really didn't understand at first um, how exactly involved it is because it, it's kind of perceived as like, you either have the talent or you don't. And that's just not true. I mean, I remember feeling that way when I was starting out as well. And uh, people who have studied and studied and worked and just done a ton of uh, observation just kind of after a while understand how thing the general way that things work and they can manipulate it creatively uh, to match a situation like uh, the lighting situation in this that I made for myself was something that I had to work with and I just kind of made decisions and I'm I'm adding little notches in the side of the, uh, the ridges and things like that of the architecture it's really just um, please do studies uh, like Last summer, I actually um, I talked to a video game dev and um, asked for advice because it, not a dev technically, I guess, an artist um, who worked in one of the video game companies in the area, and I got to talk to him, and he um, recommended that I uh, study um, architecture and like buildings and things like assets that could actually go into a game because that's what I want to do. Um, that's what I am doing now. I mean, at the time I wasn't, but, um, that's a really, really important detail. And I was kind of like all about the, uh, scribbling and the painting wildly and <laughs> getting the forms figured out. And that's great, but you do still have to know how to draw and you still have to know, um, how to, I say draw, but what I mean is like to get specific in the details because I obviously knew how to draw, but, um, not you know, skipping over the details is really important if you're working with games and movies because they need to know from the concept artist what they have to make exactly. Um, so you can't leave a whole lot of gray areas. Now speaking, since I am a concept artist, I've worked as a concept artist, um, you need to give that information to them. So, it, you know, it, I mean, during over the summer, I went and I went out and spent the day you know, uh, several times actually just drawing buildings because I had no idea how buildings actually worked and trying to dissect how they worked and a lot more time on the internet uh, doing the same thing, looking at blueprints, things like that. It's just a lot of study and uh, more research than you think. Uh, working on the game that I'm working on right now, Adderin's Cradle, we've done tons of research. I mean, it's just ridiculous how much stuff you have to look at how many photos and references you have to look at from the real world to be able to create something new uh, because you're trying to make it believable. And uh, they don't really talk about that much when, you know, nobody really talks about that that much when they're, when they're telling you what being a concept artist is about. They say, well, you have to paint fast. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you have to paint fast, but that's not the most important by far. I, you have to know what you're doing and you have to have a lot of experience under your belt and you have to be able to problem solve. The speed will come later. Concentrate on getting it right first. That's the most important thing. Okay, so we're coming to a close here. Um, I know that I kind of rambled a little bit. The uh, one thing I wanted to make sure that I got in was... Um, I'm trying to figure out the form, and uh, one thing that really, really helped besides the brush strokes was the, again, the selection tool, and I used the polygonal lasso tool um, for this because it gave those nice, hard, angular uh, edges, and I selected that and gave some big gradient shadows. The, the shadows in the back really helped to kind of define the overall shape. Uh, and that's where you have to start. You have to start with the the biggest, biggest shapes. And this has kind of got like a square shape with the big tower coming out on the top. So 
it, I mean, it's got some variation for sure. It's got little, you know, towers and things like that, um, and walls in, within that. But overall, it's kind of like a, a four-sided or a six-sided cube, you know, with the four sides, uh, north, south, east, west. So I'm trying to block that out, thinking of the big shapes first, as always. And um, shadows always go first and then highlights. That's very important and something that I've had to remind myself a lot of. Um, but yeah, the selection tool, I once I figured out that blocked out that big shadow, I was able to um, reference that kind of big shape that I left for myself uh, and put in the little details and really make those uh, big edges pop. Um, the big The big walls and things like that. And whenever you're doing hard surface selection tool and gradients is definitely the way to go. It looks really realistic. The lighting looks good. Um, there's other ways to get it, of course, but it, it's just much less time consuming if you use the gradient tool uh, and um, it, the soft brush, soft, you know, the soft round brush if you really, really want to. But although it gives you more control, it's that's sometimes the problem is it gives you a lot of control and maybe you want it. Like, light isn't being controlled by something. It's just kind of reacting uh, naturally and smooth. It's completely smooth. Uh, and if you want to replicate that, the gradient tool I found is a pretty consistent way to replicate it. So, um, anyway, yeah. I mean, thank you so much again, guys, for leaving your comments. I really appreciate it and it helps me and I really want to help you guys. So leave your questions same as last time. Uh, I definitely plan on doing more. I really love to do these videos and um, it's interesting for me too to watch what I do. So um, this and this one was definitely shorter than the last series. Uh, let me know if you prefer the really long format or the short format. And yeah, any, any other comments, criticisms, whatever uh leave them in the comments if you even if you just want to talk about yourself that's fine with me i want to know about you and i want to know how i can help you so just leave your comments below and subscribe for more videos like i said been really busy and i'm still in school don't tell anyone um but yeah all right well i'll uh, see you guys next time thanks <laughs>